What's going on, everybody? This is a big one. This is a massive, massive show. Um, now, normally we'd put out Sith Council on Wednesday, but there was no chance I was going to do that this week because normally we were putting out Wednesday episodes when Andor was out, right? Well, guess what? Andor was in studio. Diego Luna himself in studio with me, having a long conversation with him about um, how he got involved, why he got involved, some Rogue One stuff, um, the chance of him directing maybe. I asked him that and other things. And, yes, of course I asked him about the Fantastic Four. That was a rumor. It has nothing to do with Star Wars, but I had to ask him. Uh, that and more on today's show. Now, I'm not going to spend much on some of the other news, but there's some Ahsoka stuff, first images that came out um, that I definitely want to talk about and see what what's coming up and a couple of things from star wars news net that i'll go over but if you're brand new to the channel and you're just checking it out because you heard about the interview and you haven't been around hey we're trying to get to seventy thousand by the end of the year i hope that you join us if you join it from anywhere else you got sith council on every week the big thing sith council big thing in general short form content long form content we got all of it so you want to download the episodes on apple podcasts spotify that's where you can find the show on audio so if you start listening to some video and then you want to check it out later on, great. Like the Sith Council? Well, we got a shirt. We got a bunch of shirts. We got mugs. We got the whole thing. So we hope that you guys will join us over there. The link's in the description for the, uh, the merch. So make sure you check that out. Last but certainly not least is the Patreon. And so much stuff going on on the Patreon right now. Patreon.com slash The Big Thing Show. We've got one-on-one -on -one sessions. We have um, uh, Q&As. We have exclusive podcast just for the patrons watch alongs whole bunch of things so join us over there okay so like i said it is a big episode diego luna on the show today shorter episode but i think you'll be all right with that so let's get into it everybody let's talk about the news first and then we'll get to the interview it's the sith council thank you everybody for joining us let's do it We are back. We are ready. We're ready to go. It is Sith Council. Let's get into that news. Okay. First things first, again, this is from our friends over at Star Wars Newsnet. If you haven't been to Star Wars Newsnet, I've been going to them for years. They are the best. Not only do they get all the news going on with Star Wars, and I'm hoping that I give them enough for Andor. You're going to see a bunch of clips and things from the Andor or uh, Andor, uh, Diego Luna interview that will be up there as well but they have so many original pieces and things that they do they're really great you should check them out at starwarsnewsnet.com been working with them for a long time or just been you know friends with them for a bit so check them out but one of the reports on that great site is ahsoka and this is from our buddy miguel fernandez over there ahsoka you get the first glimpse of footage released as part of 2023 disney plus preview now disney plus it was a commercial and it previewed the content for 2023 including the first public footage of the upcoming ahsoka series it's no it's about two seconds long but it is a reminder that that series which stars rosario dawson as the title character is no more than a few months away from release the mandalorian season three also got some love though it was mostly reused footage from the already released teaser trailer the bad batch can be seen for a split second near the end as well um a minute long teaser for the series was previewed for star wars celebration attendees back in may and included Another shot. However, this is the first time the public has seen firsthand anything from the new series. Said teaser also hinted at Harris Tindala being part of the show. In fact, during the Mando panel where it was showed, Dave Filoni strongly hinted at the entire Ghost crew reuniting in the live-action series. We know that Natasha Lou Burdizzo is playing Sabine Wren, and the inspections Iman Esfandi has been reportedly cast as Ezra Bridger, who will likely be the MacGuffin of the series. Chopper also made an appearance at the panel, essentially confirming his involvement in the plot. No, casting details have been provided for Hera or Zeb, or even if the latter will appear. Lucasfilm is likely waiting for The Mandalorian Season 3 to be released to start promoting Ahsoka to right after. The Pedro Pascal-led series will start streaming on the platform on March 1st, a few weeks ahead of Star Wars Celebration in London. So Miguel also hints that they're probably going to bring out the big guns. There says no release date has been set for Soka so far, but it should be sometime in the summer. I think August is probably a safe bet as well. Um, 
anyway, so when it comes to this image, yeah, it, you know, it's this is going to be a highly anticipated series. I think that this is the one. It definitely puts love and care into all, everything that he does, but I think he's really going to take this one. Uh, this is going to be his masterpiece, right? This is going to be the one that he puts everything into because he created Ahsoka. He was the one, him and George Lucas, he pitched it to George Lucas. George loved it. And now he's, and she's been such a, and the journey he's been on with this character from putting her, I can only imagine how he felt in that first time when he, he debuts and everybody hated her in that first movie. I didn't, I couldn't stand it. What are they, Sky Guy, what are they doing? Now she's one of the most beloved characters in Star Wars. And now he gets to do live action. And the other thing is Rebels. Um, you talk about love and care, the love and care that he put into Rebels. He puts, again, love and care into everything, but the Rebels and what it's done, this is essentially another season of Rebels, if I was to guess. And it's and it's going to be a series that um, that it's, it's, it's just the live-action version. Now, there's a lot of rumors out there. And again, I think this is making Star Wars to put this out there, but it said that that the, the rumor is that there's gonna that this and Skeleton Crew and um, what's the other one? And Mandalorian and all that stuff in the Filoni and Favreau universe is it's gonna I've I've been hoping for something like this for a while that it's gonna lead into this kind of like one big event. And the rumors are that it could we knew that they went off into the unknown regions. We knew that because they, they say that in Rebels, but it's going to continue on. And again, I don't want to go too spoilerly into this stuff because the reason why I, it, it has not been out there yet is because it's kind of detail heavy on the plot and I don't want to get into that. So either way, this is, uh, this is very, very interesting to say the least if this is the truth that it's going to be this big event with Thrawn and all that. But this is the first event. This is the first big picture and I'm, I'm pretty excited for it. All right. So next story, Daphne Keen coming to be in that new Acolyte series. I am so excited for this. So excited. So Daphne Keen had an interview with the face and again, this is Miguel Fernandez writing for Star Wars Newsnet. Young actress Daphne Keene hinted that she has a significant role in the upcoming live action series, The Acolyte, which she confirmed that she will be filming for the next, until next April. Camera started rolling in early November in the UK and will be doing so through next May. I think this is pretty much a guarantee that that series is going to be in probably like April, May of 2024, if I was to guess. The Acolyte will be the first time pre-Phantom Menace timeline is explored in live action. While not a lot, a lot of details are known at this point, we should expect a mystery thriller set in the final days of the High Republic when the Jedi begin to realize there were some dark powers emerging that they couldn't fully comprehend. It is led by Amanda Stenberg, um, who is apparently playing a young Padawan reuniting with her former master, who we assume will be played by Squid Game's Lee jung Jae, to investigate a series of crimes. Now, how Daphne Keene's character will factor into the plot no one knows for sure. The actress hinted in a recent interview that it will be a Sith-led story, which will provide some details about how they infiltrated the Jedi Order. Set photos were leaked early this morning, showing our first look at Lee jung Jae, Dean Charles Chapman, and someone who the Daily Mall identified as Daphne Keene. The series is rumored to be currently shooting in multiple places across the UK at the same time, taking a cue from what Andor did in 2021 when they filmed Season 1. That's great news. When they are also doing... On season two, Leslie Headland is, is credited as creator, showrunner, executive producer, and director of the pilot. Given the show's sizable production schedule, it'll probably hit Disney Plus in the first half of 2024. Hey, Miguel, that's what I said. Um, I, I did a list a little while ago talking about, like, my most anticipated series. And this is my number one, man. It really is. And add this new locations uh, or that they're doing locations. I got nothing against the volume. I like the volume. I'm all for the volume. I'm just not all for heavily um, relying on the volume. Now, that being said, I also want to make it clear that I'm, I, it, there's only so much you can do during a pandemic, during lockdown, when you have like these things and like, hey, listen, we have a way to do to shoot all this stuff right now where we don't have to go on locations and do a lot and, and worry about certain, you know, um, fines, fees, things, s certain precautions that we have to take on locations and all that stuff where we can just, just do it a little more safely on the volume. No, I understand why it needed to be done, and I think it's good that they're kind of pushing away for it. I don't think they should abandon it. I think they should continue to use it, and I think you'll see it a lot in The Mandalorian. I just want to see a, a balance um, the same way. I mean, look, Andrew didn't use it at all, really, I don't think. But um, but the idea that they're not going to be using the full volume in The Acolyte, 
gets me hyped. I like to see him use it. I, I thought the way that um, House of the Dragon used it was phenomenal. You didn't even notice it. So stuff like that, I think is a little bit too noticeable in Obi Wan. Again, understanding why, but this story really, I mean, I think that they'll they'll pay pretty close attention to the idea. Remember now, they they didn't expose themselves to the Jedi, the Sith, that is because um, because Darth Maul says it. He's the last we can reveal ourselves, you know, and that doesn't happen. So they probably whoever does find out if they do, they got to be dead. I think Daphne Keen is a Sith. I think that she would play really well as a Sith, but I think she's going to play as a Jedi who's pretty much spying around. And then she's, she's, it would be a great reveal if one of our, one of our leads turns out to be Sith. See, I'm so curious how they're going to play this. I can't wait for that series. I can't wait. So excited for it. So yeah, I'm really hyped up about it. And I think Daphne Keene is going to be, it's what, what great casting, what great casting. I love her from Logan and everything too, but all right, that's the news there. Before we get to our big interview of the day, I want to tell you guys about Trade Coffee. I've told you about them many times over, and I'm so glad that they're back. And you've been purchasing them because they're noticing. They're noticing, and I want to get some reviews from you guys. The holidays are approaching, and it's time to start to think about what you're going to give your, lo- your loved ones. And if you're looking for something to get, the hardest to shop for, Look no further than a personalized coffee subscription from Trade Coffee. I'm telling you, who in your life is a big coffee drinker? This is it. This is it. They're going to go, really? What is it? And then they're going to love it. If you've been getting your coffee from the grocery store and drinking the same coffee every day, you got to try something even better. It's Trade Coffee. It makes it easy to get fresh roast delivered to your doorstep from local roasters around the country. Trade Coffee is a coffee subscription service that makes it so simple to discover new coffees and make your best cup of coffee at home every day. What Trade does is they partner with the nation's top-rated independent roasters to send you coffee that they know you're going to love, fresh to your home, and on your preferred schedule. Whether you already know what you're going to what you like already or you're new to specialty coffee and you need some help, Trade Coffee makes it easy and convenient. Now, I've tried a couple of their roasts, the dark roasts, and I what I did, we made sure today um, as Brett and I were, were setting up the studio for the interview, we wanted to make sure that this place smelled wonderful. All we had to do was brew some Trade Coffee. It smelled so good in here. It smelled so good. I love it. And it tastes so good. Holy moly. I love Trade Coffee. I'm so glad that you guys have been trying them because I want them back. I want them back as a sponsor. Why? Because I'm selfish and I want more Trade Coffee for the rest of my life. And Trade Coffee is offering our listeners a total of $30 off a subscription and access to limited time holiday specials. So you have to go to drinktrade.com slash big thing. That's drinktrade.com slash big thing. Get $30 off. Drinktrade.com slash big thing. So good. I'm telling you, man, it's so good. And it's, you guys go to the store all the time. You get the coffee that you get. Try this, please. Because not only are you helping out yourselves, you're helping out the show tremendously. And we get more interviews like this when we get more sponsors and good sponsors, really good sponsors. Um, I'm talking about really good interviews like this. I've told you guys how much I've loved Andor. I told you guys how much I love that show, the series, the way that it, it just does something with the writing, and I can't. Uh, I can't. I've been raving about it for a while. It's. I again. I, I push back against people who say, "Well, every show should be like this moving forward." I don't think so. I think that you should have certain pockets of different shows, um, and each tone can work wonderfully, right? And I think that that's the case with Andor. It's. It's so much, so much more character development. There's so much. Um, I like that the idea where the Mandalorian will will explore everything about Star Wars, right? And you get, and you and you really get a, a a real feel of the Star Wars that you that you're familiar with. The thing that I love about Andor is that it really explores the rebellion, the um, the the Empire, the politics, the espionage. And normally, as you guys know, I'm into like the the Force lore and all that stuff. But I like good character development. I like good story. And that's what I've gotten in this show. And Diego Luna is so, so um, crucial to this. He's just a fantastic actor. But when you hear him in this, you're going to hear how passionate he is about the about the role and why he took the role and why he did these things, you know, the, the, why he decided to come back to the role and be part of it. Um, working with Tony Gilroy, the, the way that he talks about the cast, the way that he talks about the detail. It's a lot of great stuff in here. So 
I was excited to have him. And make sure you comment. Make sure that you like. Make sure that you share this interview as much as possible. And definitely comment and like because it allows us to get more guests like this. Um, because I want to keep doing it. You guys, I, I love interviewing people. I love talking to people. I love meeting new people. And I love showing that to you. So without any further ado, let's get to it. Ladies and gentlemen, here is my interview with the great Diego Luna. Well, you know I'm geeking out. Absolutely, 100%. I've talked about this show at length. You guys know how much I love Andor, and I had the opportunity, I have the opportunity to talk to its star. He is nominated for not only a Golden Globe Critics' Choice Award for Best Actor in the series, is nominated for Best Drama, the one and only Diego Luna. What's up, my friend? Hey. It's nice how to talk you, to you. Uh, good, man. Listen, so this, this show, this is a special show. It really is, but I think that there's so many different things. I'm a Clearly, from the name of the show, I'm a, I'm a big Star Wars fan, and there's so much about this show that I was looking for. I'm sure you've heard this. I will also say it. To me, this is the best written Star Wars material we've gotten since Empire Strikes Back. The, we, I think we're done with this interview. That's it. Good, right? Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Wrapped it up. That's so it. We but don't need to say anything else. <laughs> I mean, have second you, season is, <laughs> is to come, and see you soon. And that's it. Have you been hearing that, though, that, about the, the idea of... Um, just, I mean, I know that you know it, obviously, from working with Tony, but the idea, because you go, obviously, when you're doing this for a fan base, you want to see what, what the word is on the street, and people are, this, I hear this often. So when this comes out, are you curious, are you, you kind of listening to what the, what the tone is? Mm -hmm. uh, how, how does that, how does that go? I do, I do, uh, I love, I love now that we have the opportunity to actually get feedback, you know, through social media and the reviews, and uh, it seems that, uh, that, there, if if you if you know how to handle it also because it can get you a little crazy and, totally. and uh, yeah. but if you know how to handle it, it's very useful uh, in fact you know because you have to see if the reasons that made you do something or what you were aiming for is actually what's getting out there you know yeah. and with this show it's been very special that the words and 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 the concepts and and the ideas we had is what people is celebrating, yeah. uh, which I love. It's like, I remember talking to Tony saying like, we should be able to do something complex where characters are real, are grounded, where the moments uh, feel, feel intense and intimate. We need to find a way to have a, I think it, it started in Rogue One. Uh, I remember asking uh, the director in Rogue One, why, why did you cast me, you know? Oh. And, and he goes like, well, I love it to Mama Tambien. And I go like, uh, it's quite interesting. So what you're saying is that you, you wish you, you could do Star Wars with the tone of it to Mama Tambien, mm -hmm. you know? And, and, and we said, yes, it's exactly that. This is, this is the one about the people in Star Wars. This is the one that should feel familiar and right. uh, and you should feel you're witnessing uh, the life of your neighbors. Uh, and it happens to be in a galaxy far, far away, right. but it should feel as close as that. And I think I think that's something we we took to the next level with this with with Andor. I think Tony was very like he, he was reminding ourselves all the time this. There ha everything needs to have a meaning. There has to be a reason for things to happen. This has to be real. This has to be happening. And uh, and then you go into the reviews and you read, like, it's so real. Yeah. It's so realistic. And you go, like, wow, it's been cel the, the series, it's been celebrated for the same reasons I decided to do it, you know? Uh, yeah. And that is that is unique. That doesn't happen often. No, it doesn't. I think that that's well. It's also a nice change because, like, I I like the uh, for me I, I'm the fantasy side of it. The, the the science meets magic, but but and I like the Sith and the Jedi and all that. But there's something about the rebellion side and what I always wanted to see when the show was announced. I was like, I want to see not only because we obviously know it's going to be focused on Andor from the title of the show, but I wanted to see that part of the Empire, the part of it, not not only why they're so terrifying and the fascism and all that, not just that because that that we need to see from just the George Lucas side of it, but I wanted to see the actual human relationship, what Deidre is doing and all this, because it was a great quote that Tony Gilroy gave. He's like, you're not, it, she's just, she's, she's bad. She's bad, but she's got this, but there's this thing about her, this complex, what drives her. And it's every character, as you said, they're interesting and they're real. And you, you know, people like that. Yeah. It's a, th there is not like, I know it sounds cliche, but it's true. There is not good and bad people here. There is, there is people making choices. Many make the wrong choice, uh, but there there has a, there has to be that 
element or uh, that human element that connects you with them you know even though you would be like i probably would never get that far right uh, but i i can see a human making a choice and you know a decision uh, i can see uh, just yeah people dealing with who they are and uh, uh, and with that complexity that duality that we all have you know yeah. uh, I, i remember saying a lot like this has to be on the gray areas always uh, it 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 ha it can't be easy to say like okay this guy is good this guy is bad you know cassian starts making a choice that is yeah. <laughs> uh, very complex let's put it that way mm -hmm. you know and uh, and he takes the i mean he he takes the decision in a second and executes and starts running Yeah, and he's a survivalist at, at the yeah for and, sure, and, and probably he's going to question that decision uh, for for years in his life, you know. But in that moment, he was just there, reacting right. with the be the best way he could, you know. I I like I like that the 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 show, um, it's tries to avoid all these kind of like movie moments that make characters heroes, you know. Like it's it's just regular people here yeah. capable of doing extraordinary things yes because they learn to work together and you were saying it you want to see all the other characters and i think it's important to say it because uh, cassian is a great excuse to understand why a rebellion is needed yeah. but a, a rebellion or a revolution is about It's, it's 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 about like a, an ensemble, you know. Yeah. It, it's never the story of someone. Uh, therefore, this character is going to take you to all these other stories that are so interesting and that ended up shaping him, you know, and will shape you as audience. A hundred percent, I think so. I want to rewind back to something you said, um, where you're talking about just working with with Rogue One, but we know what happens in the fate of of Andor, obviously. <laughs> What's that conversation like, though, when they come to you and they go, "Hey, we want to do a series. We want to do is it, is it is it Tony first? Is it is it Kathleen Kennedy? Is it Lucas? I mean, is it Disney? Like, who comes to you and says, "Hey, we want to do this"? And are you like, "Sounds great. I'm on board." Or is it like, "Well, I'm dead. How do how do we do this?" Like, what's what what was that conversation like? It was it was it was Kathleen Kennedy, and yes, it was uh, it was a an easy one to 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 respond because it was like should we explore the possibility of doing something going uh, telling the backstory of the character and i w so i was invited in the right moment you know it was like and and with the right words also it's like we, we should try to explore this and see where that gets us you know yeah. we It sounded perfect to me it sounded risky uh, which is something i i I think we owe to Rogue One, you know. Rogue One was meant to be different and uh, was meant to connect with a with a, an audience that uh, was more, I guess, connected with the, the early films uh, and that had been part of this universe for a long time, right. uh, that was willing to see something more dark, more complex, more. And uh, and I think we we owe to that fan base uh something special and we didn't say like okay we're gonna do this we said let's let's go and find that what that is you know yeah. and if that's if it's something that matters then we'll do it and then tony gilroy came in and when he pitched his idea it was it was clear that it had to be done you know because it was Well, it was what it is, yeah. basically. It, we didn't move much. When he sat down with me the first time, it was on the phone, in fact, uh, and he explained to me how he was seeing this and what the possibilities were and what characters we were going to have and uh, and how it was going to be structured. It sounded, it sounded risky as nothing else. Yeah. And it sounded like... It sounded so so interesting to say like oh Star Wars is going there, wow that makes it already very interesting right. you know because it, it is it is quite bold and and, and risky uh, to to go there, uh, and I think people started to get involved with this project for the right reasons yeah uh, not just the, the the cast because we have a fantastic cast people. Uh, that look for characters, you know, and uh, and found 
the characters and the words, you know, the complexity yeah. in, in, in the page. But also in terms of, of the designers, the, the, the costume designer, the makeup designer, the, the production designer, it's, it's, it's people that are uh, so excited with the possibilities of, of what Andor brings to us, you yeah. know. And, and you can tell uh, that we are all very, very excited and enjoying the ride. And being very rigorous and, and uh, working hard. Well, that's what it is. It's the amount of detail that's mm -hmm. in the show and little things that are said. And, and the idea that, because I had said this recently, I said that Cassian Andor inside of Rogue One, I found, um, in complete honesty, the reason why it was in, the character was intriguing to me in the movie was because of you, because of your performance. I was a fan of your actor, the, what you brought to it. He wasn't as detailed in the movie. He is. He's got a lot going on, but not as detailed, obviously, as you can do yeah. in a more structured streaming. You've been on Narcos. You've done these shows. You've been on TV. Do you find that the streaming side as an actor, that you can really dive deep into the character, mm -hmm. you can really find more um, because I've learned so much more about Cassie and Andor, yeah. and become so much more of a fan of the character because of th that opening scene right away. Like I, it sucks that he had to do that, but I get it. It was, it was after after the first guy goes, that's his only chance. That's his only thing he's got to do, and the, and the other guy knows it too. He's trying to talk himself out of it. He knows he's dead. So what is it about? Is it streaming? Is it the idea that is it television in general? You have more time to really develop and find who it is. I think. I think. Um there is there is great examples of, of how television can become that. Uh, not just by doing television, you'll be doing it because it depends on on the team behind. Right. And uh, and I think the confidence uh, that the the company or the studio or whoever is, is is paying for it has on 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 the show matters so much. Yep. You know, I think the freedom the freedom that that we we have with Andor. The, the freedom and the confidence and the and the support we have from Lucas and from Disney matters a lot, you know, because if you think about it, we, we shot the whole first season uh, and we started the second season without the, the first being out, mm. you know. Uh, there is confidence in what we're doing, you know, and on uh, there's confidence in Tony Gilroy, in the whole team, and, uh, and, and we have freedom and that makes it like a makes something like this possible you know yeah. where you can go deep you know because you're not trying to please uh, anything else but the, the the purpose of the show uh, what got you there at the beginning um, i think that that is lovely uh, and it's 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 something i i i'm really looking forward now um but but you don't see that in every tv project right it's the right there's a it's there's the a lot of repetition also like yeah, some, the moment yeah. where something works you just see that happening over and over uh, you know again right. and you go like oh that's very dangerous because having 12 episodes means nothing having something to say that can last 12 episodes is something you know having a story that is so complex yeah. and with so many characters that you need f 12 episodes that that is really cool uh if you get the time to shoot it, you know the resources yeah. and the and the patience, uh, because really we are talking here about the first season, uh, but doing the second is not going to take us five months. Right, <laughs> you know? we, we're going to have to be patient for the second season to come because we're going to work uh, with the same rigor and time that we worked on the first season and with the same amount of you know specificity and and attention to detail, yeah. and that takes time. Well, absolutely, and I think that one of those things, do you ever, because when you look at, um, whether it's Mandalorian or or, um, or Obi-Wan, or any of these, they're using the volume, which you guys didn't do. Okay. Um, so, and that obviously goes into more time, right, because of locations and things too, but I also think that it's one of the reasons that it benefited the show so much. Was there ever, ever a time that you're like, can we use the volume? <laughs> <was> like, <laughs> Not really. I mean, I was I was shocked the day I, I, I went, for the first time to that place and and it's spectacular and what you can do there is is great but it's not the process we do you know it's not is it it doesn't it, it wouldn't not go well with with our show you know uh it's i think i think one one thing that is uh, necessary for this show to work is that uh, we are that you see these characters interacting with with the real places and spaces and uh, and that that town exists yeah. and that you can shoot around the town and improvise uh, and uh, and and that you can 
fill it with people and have them, you know, try to walk in the same place and, and get a camera inside and be handheld and free and crazy. Uh, it's part of our show and it's the way our, our show is shot. I think it gives um, our show some, some yeah, identity that uh, we would lose if we tried to do it in another way. Uh, but it, but that's because it was planned that way, you know, and because the the, the our show emulates and and uh, celebrates some a type of cinema that we love, yeah. you know, that that we love and that we have as a referent when we're shooting, you know. So no, no, I I never I never felt that way, uh, and uh, to to be honest, as an actor, is is amazing to to get to interact with these sets. Uh, Things are there for a reason, you know. Yeah. I, I remember in Marva's um, house, you know, in the house. Uh, I remember with the rehearsing with with, with Ben, uh, one of the directors, and I said like, oh, I think I should open that shelf. We should see if we can put something in the shelf that I can use to. And then I go and I open the shelf, and when I look inside the shelf, there's stuff there. And there's a reason, and it's all cooking stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's there because it's close to the kitchen, and there is a logic about it. And then I go like, shit. <laughs> I mean, I don't even have to talk to props. This is already happening. This is a house. Yeah. And there's a there's a logic behind this house. And then, so I opened it up, I saw what was there, and we came up with an action that had to do with those props that were already placed by someone else there. That specificity, it was, the, the shelf, could have never been opened, <laughs> you know, yeah. and uh, and the stuff was going to be there anyway. Yeah, I loved it. I, the reason I'm so glad that you said that too, because it's noticeable even in in um, when Stellan Skarsgård when he's got his uh, when he's when his shop, mm -hmm. there's old details of old stuff that I'm sure Tony Gilroy didn't know what the hell some of it was, right? Mm -hmm. But but it did, but the the fact was he found people who did. Yeah, that was the thing. It was like there's stuff in there that would be in there, and he's talking about. Well, I'm not a massive Star Wars fan. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that he's not paying attention to every no. little detail and something like you said right there. That that just proves that. Oh, obviously, no, no, yeah. no. That I, I was uh, talking about the team designing and and operating B two, for example. It's, I mean, the amount of time put behind that droid, you know, how it was going to move, how it's going to interact with you, how it's going to react, yeah. how it's going to receive the information. They have to pee in that thing in the first episode. <laughs> Did that have to happen? The poor little thing. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And then I, I got very, uh, and this is something uh, uh, I, I learned in, in, in Rogue One, you know, when you're, when you're supposed to act in front of a, of a droid or, or, or um, uh, a creature, or you have to, uh, uh, the, the voice has to come from where you're reacting to, sure. you know, from, from the droid or the creature. Otherwise, it, it, I mean, I don't know if, I, I guess I'm going to say it, it, it fucks with your brain, yeah. you know? If you're listening a voice here, but you have to act here, uh, at least for me, it's, it's, Sure. makes it quite impossible in fact yeah. you know there's something that doesn't connect in my brain and i started like going crazy so we we had many tests to find the right speaker to be inside the droid for the voice to come out with the right texture you yeah. know that is what i talk about like the amount of Detail. Yeah, sure, sure. And, and the time that it takes us to get to the moment where we can actually shoot this, it takes time because we every decision, every every scene, every every action happens after a long conversation right. and many questions and 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 uh, sessions of back and forth till we find what's what's the right way to do it or what is the way we can actually execute what we are dreaming of you well, know and hence two seasons because that's just there's only so much you can do obviously but and leading up to rogue one as well as we will see and i've got to ask i gotta ask um three questions before i let you go here three, yeah. three ones that I, I, I knew i said i gotta ask them these three things hmm. um the first is when it came you you, you mentioned the directors and tony Gilroy had given an interview recently where he said that they couldn't get everybody back to direct just because of time periods and schedules and everything too you yourself director and you've directed stuff. You've wanted to and uh, do more, obviously. And you're so passionate about this. Was there ever a conversation where you're going to say, you know, I know it well. I know the detail. I know to do it. Sign me up. Um, and, or, or 
No. Or no thanks. No, no, no. I mean, and I spoke once to Sana. Uh, Sana is her producer, uh, the, the one that actually is there every day and the one that keeps everything moving forward. Uh, she's fantastic. We talked about it, but it, it's it would it would be impossible uh, because again of the amount of work behind this show, the the pre production of the show is crucial. You know, directors work three months before going on directing their blocks. We we shoot a block of three episodes, which is uh, 120 minutes. You know, it's a movie, and you get three months to prepare your movie. So you would lose the actor three months or I would have someone else prepare the show you're supposed to direct, which makes no sense. Right. But besides that, I, I have a rule and I, I don't think I'm going to break it. You know, uh, I as a, as a director, I don't want to be acting, you know, and I think it's really unfair uh, to ask an actor uh, to be his own director. The, the, the beauty of being directed is that you put everything to serve someone else's perspective and point of view and that you can trust someone uh, to let you go uh, be vulnerable and, and 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 that you will have someone there to catch you i think it's if you i'll i'll, uh, I'll answer you with a question yeah tell me which uh which actor has given his best performance in something he's directed himself Let's see. Let's see. I, I would try it's and think. It's, I would say you, might, you st- might come with one or two. Yeah, I would try to. I, I'd say but, Stallone uh, and Rocky too is pretty good. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> and but I haven't even even though I don't know if I think that Carl Weathers did a pretty great job in The Mandalorian, but he he wasn't the main. It wasn't the main focus. He was he had a side role. He could, but yeah. I mean it's it, yeah. I, I've always said I don't know how people do it. It's right? very it's, it's very it's difficult. difficult. Yeah. Mean, it's very, very difficult. Yeah. It doesn't mean it hasn't happened. It might have happened. But you're right. You got to pick your brain and really f- try to find the ones for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I think, I think it's quite, it's, it's, it's so complicated for a film to be good or a show to be good that if you have an opportunity to have a better actor than yourself, take it. And there's always someone yeah. better. <laughs> you know? I understand. That's, no, I get it. I just, other, yeah, I just, yeah. I was curious about that because I knew that, you know, that was something you're passionate about as well. But so uh, the two other things, the one, and uh, and two of them, I don't even know if you'll be able to answer and we'll move on if you can. The, when it comes to Rogue One, I wanted to ask because there was always, because I know Tony Gilroy again has been talking about things that there, that happened in the past in the script and things. Darth Vader, when Vader, Vader was, you know, obviously has this big moment at the end and I thought it was so, I thought it was such a great ending the way Cassian and um, and Cassian went out with the with the big kind of deep impact tidal wave thing at the very end of it is beautiful and and they they had served their purpose him and Jin and that was that. The rumors were also that at one point Vader killed them all. Is that can you confirm or deny that, or you can't even talk about that stuff anymore? At one point that Vader, but in, in the original version, Vader was the one who took them out. No, well. No. No. I, I I wasn't there. You were not. Happened. Okay. Okay. Because uh, it wasn't. I, mean, I I was when when I was. I love I love the also the story because it, it's so not what people think it was. But I the first time I was asked to sit down uh, with the director uh, in Los Angeles in Los Angeles, um, I was asked to go to a restaurant. The restaurant was empty. He was giving his back to the wall with his computer open and he asked me to sit down next to him and he started telling me a story you know and kept saying and then so this girl and then this guy and then this girl and then this guy and started showing me uh, drawings and concept art and and uh, and at the end I go like why is he like phrasing it that way you know yeah. and he goes like I wanna I want you to play the guy and I go like what <laughs> and he and why am I telling you this story? Well, then he said, like, well, if you want to, now we have to convince everyone else. Uh, but I would love to do this with you. And I said, like, wow, perfect. My God, I would love to. And the story he pitched me is the one we saw in okay. terms of beginning and end. Okay. Uh, well, there you go. Yeah. Right from <laughs> yeah. from the man many himself. Thing, many many things change on the way. Yeah. but uh, but not the not the end. Okay. Uh, last one, then, and I know we got to go. So, um, you've done Star Wars, 
you've done DC with the Super Pets, by the way. Uh-huh. So real, that, I, I enjoy. I thoroughly enjoyed that. That was a lot of a real lot of fun. My my um, my kids watch it. Any interest in doing anything else outside of the big IP? Like because again. Uh, we're not going to get an answer out of here with the with the Marvel with the Fantastic Four. I see the, the point, <laughs> but um, as far as if if you could, is Marvel something that you'd be interested in doing if the opportunity arose? Is all I'll ask. <laughs> can you not uh, not even can we go the road? No, no, no. Okay. I, I, no, I, I just I just like the the. Um, it's, I was talking about about that this morning, like w- the rumors. When you become part of rumors, like. If half of the rumors were real, you know, but it's it's just incredible the amount of stuff oh, man. that uh, that that I see now out there. Uh, the only thing I can tell you, man, is that for the next two years I'm busy. Right. Okay. And in two years we'll see if uh, if what I want to do is, is is even film. <laughs> I mean, that's fair. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see where that leaves us. Um, it, this is this is I'm I'm till twenty twenty four I'm gonna be wrapped up in Andor doing this. Yeah. You know? I understood. Well do you like Reed Richards? Can I ask you that? <laughs> 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 All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. I, I, I do have to thank you very much for this show. It is it is just such a great great show and it's and i think that it there's it's it really has given a lot to a lot of people i think that what you have done there's so much detail to it thank you very much and i appreciate you giving you your time here today thank you so much all right guys so once again Andor, we saw it we love it and rightfully so nominations all around the board here for the great diego luna so thank you guys once again sith council see you soon so that was it that was my interview with diego luna very excited, very thankful that he came in, and the nominations were well deserved for both Golden Globe, um, Critics' Choice Award for Best Actor for a Drama, and Andor for Best Drama. So Emmys are coming down the line, so we'll we'll see that when it comes out, and it'll probably be nominated as well. But just hearing everything, and I tried with the Fantastic Four thing. I tried. I knew he wasn't going to give me anything on there, but you know, I had to. I had to. I had to ask. But it, it is one of those things, though. He said it. I'm wrapped up for the next two years. Now, the next two years, 2024, 2025, who knows when they're going to cast Fantastic Four? Who knows? Anyway, um, but I did ask, and I also, it was also because I had heard that Darth Vader stuff for a while, and I wanted to get it from him, and I believe him. That story he told about meeting with Gareth Edwards, and Gareth Edwards telling him, you know, listen, I want you, and this is the story, and the story never changed. Okay. I, I buy it. Why is he going to, at this point, why, why, why make it up? And so... Really like talking to him, man. I like the passion, and I like, and I love his answer about directing, where he's just saying, "I, I," because he loves directing. I mean, he's he really wants to do it. And even off air, we talked to him a little bit about it also, and he said, "I like to, um, I like to put it all into the directing." That's not to say anybody who who doesn't, but for him, the way he wants to lock in on either the directing or the or the acting, um, I think it made a lot of sense. So, what'd you guys think? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Uh, I was excited to have him in studio. So that's it. That's the show today. So make sure, by the way, if you haven't subscribed to us on podcast form, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, we're normally on every Wednesday on this channel and also on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. So please join us there. So I'm going to join us. Join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash The Big Thing Show. Had a lot of new people join recently. And if you're brand new, whether you're joining the channel and I've never had a chance to talk to you, let me know. Drop me a line and say, hey, man, I just decided to join the Patreon and let you know about it. Um, if you like Sith Council and you want to support the Sith Council, there you go. You got a shirt. Show some class. The Top Gun guys, the Flirt and Flows, Capes and Cows, the big thing, and more. There's a there's a bunch of different shirts on there that we hope that you enjoy. Um, and that's really it, minus the fact that if you haven't subscribed, please do that now. If you're brand new and you found us from the interview today, please subscribe to us. Help us get to seventy thousand. We're going to try to do that by the time we get to uh, the end of the year. Ha- Merry Christmas. Give us give us a give us a sub if you can. But that's it, everybody. That's the show. That is Sith Council on a special Tuesday. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you guys on the flip side. Thanks again. See you soon. I can feel your anger. It gives you focus, makes you stronger. 